Hi, we're Bob and Holly from Bissonnet Stolen Vac. We want to answer questions we've been hearing about how to make masks, COVID masks, out of vacuum bags. How do I decide if I should make a mask out of fabric or a vacuum bag? Fabric masks are what the CDC is now recommending that people wear around town. Uh, we've heard from some medical professionals that don't want fabric masks. I mean, there's, they're all different, so you have to check. But there's also a need for a, a non-fabric mask, and that's the ones that we're focusing on. So it's good for people to make fabric masks, but there's a need for both. Right. The fabric masks are great for friends and people who are walking around town, um, but they're not as good a filtration as some of the vacuum bag fabrics. But they last longer. But they're washable, and they last longer, right. So there's, there's a need for both. We're just going to focus on one style right now. How do I know what kind of vacuum bag to use? There are so many different kinds of vacuum cleaner bags. The first thing I was tempted to use is the Miele bag because these are extremely good filtering bags. However, I found some problems when, as I started working with it. When you cut into the edge, you'll notice a lot of little fibers. And you probably read them, some things on the internet of what's in those fibers and, and, and are they safe. Um, a statement from Miele that we got, we're a Miele dealer, and they say, um, Several people have asked about using Milo bags for face masks. Material, the, the material the bags are made of has not been tested for use as a mask or as a remedy against viral transmission, nor has it been approved by the FDA or for any type of medical use. We do not know whether they will help or harm the user. Therefore, we cannot recommend their use as a mask. And, and while they're not saying it would be bad, that was enough for me to say maybe we should try a different material. And so we, we adopted uh, the Ricard bags, because we have a lot of them. We also sell Ricard. That's the Ricard Type F bag. And what I, what, the way I evaluate them, I try a bunch of different bags, and I blow through it like that to see how well my breath can pass through. And you'd be surprised as you try different ones. Some of them are really hard to breathe through. This one is fine. Tell me about your design. Okay, so the basic design comes from a YouTube video, a very popular YouTube video, and we shared that link in the description below. It's worth taking a look at that. Um, but we were making it a different kind of paper, so we've done some modifications to it. Um, first of all, you'll notice that the seam is glued shut, and we'll show you how to do that. There's no sewing on this, so there's no holes in it to leak. And the elastic is also glued on. This is an inch and a quarter waistband elastic, and it makes a great headband. It's soft, it fits your head really well. And you can pull this elastic cord out uh, to adjust the fit. On the nose piece, we have put a wire in there. It's a fairly stiff piece of wire, stiffer than a pipe cleaner, so that when the pressure from the band is on to make a good seal around your face, it doesn't straighten that wire out and cause a leak by your nose. Um, also, you notice the shape is different. Um, they call it a duck bill, and it's a little longer than some. And the reason is you need some square area to get a good breathe to make it very breathable, so that um, it, you're not you're not forcing the air in and out through the fabric. Okay, I'm going to show you how to dismantle a vacuum bag, so that, turn it into fabric that you can cut out of. I'm using a Ricard Type F bag because it's so big. First thing is to remove the dock for the putting it in the vacuum. Just tear that off, and if it tears, it tears. It's okay. Next thing is cut the ends up. The ends are rolled and, and glued. So we'll just, I'm using a rotary cutter, but scissors would work. Just cut the ends up. Next, you want to open the bag up. And this bag has a liner in it. So when you open it up, you want to make sure that you're not going between the liner and the bag, but you're actually opening up both layers, and you want to look for the seam. Here that is where the seam is, where it's glued into a tube, so we want to cut along that seam, along the edge of the seam. Making sure that you're, again, getting both layers and not tearing the layer underneath. Now, inside the bag, between the layers, there is a piece of paper for reinforcement where th there's a lot of pressure on the bag, so we need to remove that. So carefully take it apart and tear it off. It's, it's glued in, so you want to make sure 
that if anything tears, it's that reinforcing paper and not the filter paper. I maintain the integrity of the filter paper so that the mask can do its job. And then lay it flat. So I like to fold it where the, the hole is, and then I can place it on the fold and make use of that space. Mark the edges with a pen. This pattern that I'm using will have in the description below with its dimensions. You can download it or you can uh, just make your own given the dimensions. Again, I'm using a rotary cutter, but scissors would work as well. There's our, there's our mask piece. So in addition to the paper mask, we also need a 15 inch piece of waistband elastic and the wire nose piece like this is cut from 4 inches of wire just got from a hardware store And I just take and quickly make a loop in the ends, make sure that the um, end doesn't stick out at all so it would pop through the paper. Try to make them so they're going in the same direction. They lay flat. So that it lays flat. Now let's assemble one. Okay, so we're going to make a tiny little fold, small as you can with your hands. And then press another fold. And we're going to press this down. Again, and small is important here. We don't want it to wrap all the way up to the corner. I'm going to do another one on this side. So you're folding it and folding it again. Folding it and folding it over again. And I press it down so that the glue doesn't have to do all the folding for me. Okay, now I'm going to open this back up. I'm going to follow with the glue, I'm going to follow the raw edge of that first fold. I'm going to fold this over and you can use your fingers or if you don't like the hot glue feel you can use a ruler to press it down real quickly. And go to the other side and we can do that one as well. So you're gluing along the long edge and the short cut edges of that fold. Right. I'm just following the fold. Making sure that it stays tucked in when I press it down. And again, we can press it with the ruler. Um, if, if you want to save on glue, just put a little tiny bit of glue. I put a lot there so you can see it. It just oozes right out of the seam. Now we're just going to take and we'll make a little cut. And this is a 90 degree angle here with the folded edge with the folded edge I'm just going to clip that off and I clipped it off not quite to the edge just a little little bit of a space there same here push this out of the way I'm calling the side with the seams the bottom so they're rolled around to the bottom right and I'm just going to fold this over on the bottom here and fasten it with a short piece of your tape. We could get fancy and glue that, but we're in a hurry because we want to make a lot of these for people. I'm going to make a fold here, following the same, following the bottom fold, so that we have a nice even edge all the way around. I'm going to open this back up. I'm going to tuck the wire in there that I just made, and I'm going to just touch it with a dab of glue on both ends. Try to center it. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, it's, it's got to be centered here at the center of the wire.
another piece of tape just to hold this. Now we're going to take and in an area I'm just going to draw this out because it'll be hard to see with the clear glue. I'm just going to press the glue right into that this in this little pocket right here is where the drawstring is. So we want to make sure that gets sealed here. So that little square is where I'm putting the glue. I'm just going to set the mask in there. The edge of the paper right up against this the pocket. And I'm going to fold this over. And it can get a little hot right now. So I'm going to clamp it with a clamp like that. These are just clamps I had around or you could use a clothespin as well. So we're just going to do this other side here real quick. Making sure the band's not twisted. Making sure the band is not twisted. Correct. Thank you. Another clamp. Then we're just going to set that aside like that. Now we'll show you how to fit the mask. And it's, first thing you need to do is pull the draw cord out of this little sheath. And by using a paper clip or some other similar tool, you can separate, you can dig your way into that little groove, and you'll pull out a little string like that, and you can pull that out. Now this can be pulled to tighten it up, and uh, you could draw, you could tie a knot in that for somebody who has a smaller head. To fit the mask, I'm just going to take and bend this wire to the rough shape of my nose. And I can push the whole thing right over my head. And I put it on my face, and I get the nose fit really nice and snug. I bend it so it's right in the corner. And I can pull this down here like this. If you don't look like a duck, you did it wrong. Then you can pull the elastic band up to wherever it's comfortable on your head, wherever it holds. By moving it up or down, you can, by moving the mask around rather, you can change the tension across here and the tension on the bottom. So this is Bob and Holly saying thanks for watching and thanks to our healthcare professionals and be safe.